Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this installment of the video log for the RF Mentor website. My name is Rex Frobenius and I am one of the authors on the RF Mentor website. I'm also an instructor with Besser Associates. Um, I primarily teach the RF measurements course as well as the RF technology certification online course. And today I'd like to share with you a new software application um, a calculator, let's call it, is programmed in JavaScript. And its purpose is to examine the operation of a switching mixer. And the role of a mixer in an RF system is to provide a multiplication function uh, between two signals. And what you get from that when you do all the trig, trig, uh, trigonometry is that you end up at the output with uh, not only the original input signals, but also signals at the sum and difference frequencies of the two input signals. And that's very useful because that then allows you to take a fixed frequency signal and mix it with another signal uh, perhaps from a voltage controlled oscillator over which you have control of the frequency. And now the output will have a signal at a frequency that you can control. And that output signal has the same properties that uh, the fixed frequency signal had as far as modulation and information. And so this is how tuning is generally achieved in modern radio systems. So one other background piece of information is the question of where does this multiplication come from? And there's really two main categories of how the multiplication is achieved in the hardware. And uh, the mathematically straightforward uh, or method that's kind of easy to s visualize from a mathematical standpoint is to take a device uh, that has an exponential relationship between the voltage and the current. And then you operate it at a region where the output includes a squared term. Uh, when you expand that exponential function, you can represent that as a Taylor series. And that's going to have uh, the fundamental squared term, cubed, and so forth. And really, we're gonna, what you're going to do is focus on that squared term and therein you will get the uh, multiplication and from that the sum and difference. But another practical method for producing the uh, mixing operation or the multiplication is actually to use a device as a switch and either turn the device on, uh, sorry, turn the, use one of the signals to turn the other signal on and off in the case of a diode or uh, to invert the one of the input signals based on the second signal. And so this calculator, now getting to the root of the matter, looks at such a switching mixer and how it would operate on the waveform. And in this particular example, we're looking at a switching mixer that would invert the signal based on the second signal. So let me set uh, set the frequencies so that you can see the, uh, the, the waveforms more clearly. And so let's maybe set the RF at uh, 4 hertz and the local oscillator at 2 hertz. And then if we update, uh, the graph nicely updates. And here we can see the RF signal in blue and the local oscillator signal, that's the one that we would generate and that we can change the frequency, uh, will be in green. And the point of this switching mixer is that whenever the green local oscillator signal goes negative, it's going to invert, the output will be ha see the inverted RF wave. So it'll just get change uh, get basically multiplied by negative one. So, and you can see that happening here when the 
LO is positive, the RF signal, the blue RF signal, just carries on um, as, as it normally would. But then as soon as it goes negative, uh, here's zero voltage, as soon as the green goes negative, the blue RF signal gets inverted. So now it's the negative one times what it was before. And conversely, when the LO becomes positive again, once again, then the signal gets switched back to its non-inverted uh, form and so forth. So here you can see that the output waveform becomes this kind of choppy uh, waveform that's getting inverted and uh, switched back to its non-inverted format. And what you get is, you notice right away you get these discontinuities and anything that's sudden in the time domain, which is what we're showing here, uh, anything that's sudden in the time domain results in a great use of resources in the frequency domain. So what I'm saying in simpler terms is something that happens suddenly like this is going to produce a lot of harmonics in the output. And so those all need to be filtered out uh, since you're not really interested in using those. Now, if we increase the, the frequencies, we can actually see, so the low frequency is good for seeing the waveform uh, inverting. If we choose two frequencies that are uh, two hertz apart, but uh, much larger frequencies, let's do 40, and instead of uh, two, we'll do 40 minus two, or 38 uh, hertz. And that'll fill up the screen a bit more and it looks very confusing, but now that it's more dense, you can see here the difference frequency in the blue waveform. So this would be looking like a two hertz difference frequency. And the sum will show up if you count these uh, individual peaks, uh, that will be the sum frequency. So the sum would be 40 plus 38, and that would be 78 hertz. Now, it's not going to add up exactly to 78 if you actually go through and count it on this particular example, because I have not uh, tweaked the setup to show an exactly uh, even or an exactly fixed number of uh, wave uh, periods in the graph. So I, there's a little bit more tweaking that can be done in the future. Uh, frankly, I was just extremely excited to get anything to work at all, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, getting this, primarily getting this interaction between the input boxes and the uh, graph to show up uh, was, was a bit convoluted. Uh, I'm using a setup, and I'll talk about it in a, a separate uh, posting. I'm using a setup where the uh, underlying code is actually written in Python, and then it gets interpreted uh, by a JavaScript environment. And uh, it, the JavaScript environment for that is still kind of in its early stages of development, and there's not very much documentation as a result. So um, a little bit of hair pulling to get this to work, but hope you enjoy it. And so you can try entering different values. Uh, there is a practical limit. Uh, you probably don't want to enter anything uh, too much beyond 100, I don't think. Uh, it, in the worst case, it'll uh, probably crash your browser or something uh, crazy like that. But um, you can see you'll get all sorts of interesting outputs. And I'm going to continue to be working on uh, this, uh, this setup using Python. And um, as I learn more about the intricacies of producing this graph in JavaScript, um, I'll hopefully be able to improve the, uh, the graphing uh, to be a little bit more sophisticated than, than what's going on right now. But I wanted to share this with you immediately. Um, kind of excited to get it working. And uh, I think it does demonstrate a very useful concept in understanding how mixers work. So hopefully this helps you. And uh, if you like the video, please uh, certainly subscribe to the channel. And if you want to use the um, calculator itself, you can go to the RF Mentor website. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Um, perhaps you're watching this video directly from the RF Mentor website. If so, then uh, welcome. 
and uh, we hope to see you again in a future video. All right, thanks very much everyone for watching, and uh, we'll hopefully talk to you soon.